So you've heard about this chat GPT thing and you're really not sure what it is or where to even start learning how to use it for yourself. Well, in this video, we're going to dive deep into what you can do from a beginner standpoint and all of the different benefits you can get from using chat GPT. Let's get into it. Before we dive too deep, I want to get into some definitions. First of all, what does ChatGPT mean? Well, first you have the chat because ChatGPT is a chat bot. It's a way of interacting with the computer in a very unique way. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Now that may sound like a very big mess of words and it's okay, you don't really need to know what they mean. But what you do need to know is that ChatGPT is a form of generative AI. And what this means is it is a form of machine learning. It's not all machine learning, but is just one subset of machine learning, which means that it can read a text and learn more about that text. And then it is able to reproduce and then from reading that text and a whole lot of other texts, it is able to actually learn how language works. And that's why these are called large language models. And from that, it is now able to do a variety of different language based tasks. And it can do quite a number of amazing things. That's all you really need to know about it. It's not important to really have a technical background in ChatGPT to be able to use it. I am not a technical person and I can use ChatGPT just fine. So to get started with ChatGPT, you need to go to chat.openai.com or you can just Google ChatGPT and it should bring you right to this screen. And then all you have to do is go over here and click sign up. It'll take you to this page and you can put in your email address and it'll walk you through the different steps on how to create your ChatGPT account. Once you've done that, you will be taken into ChatGPT itself. Now yours might look a little different than mine. Uh, first of all, you won't see everything here on the left side until you've been using it for a while. These are past chats that I've had. Uh, this may be completely blank for you. The other thing you might not notice is uh, you might not see a few of the things here because you'll see this says GPT 3.5 and this says GPT 4 and then here it says chat GPT plus. That is because I am a paid subscriber to chat GPT plus which gives you a few new benefits and I'll go over the, what those are right now. The main benefit, the one that I pay the money for is for access to GPT-4. Now let me explain exactly what this means for a second. When ChatGPT first came out, it was released in November of 2022 and it made a huge splash, made all the news, and really started this whole AI arms race that we are in the middle of right now. That was using GPT-3.5. GPT-3.5 is a language model um, that I've, as I've mentioned, is one of these models that's been trained on a whole lot of data and it learns about that data. And it's good and it was very good at the time. But since then, OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, has released GPT-4, which is a much more advanced model. The only thing about GPT-4 is that it is only available to ChatGPT Plus subscribers, which as of this recording costs $20 a month. I will probably do a completely separate video about whether it's worth it to even subscribe to ChatGPT Plus and if it's worth the $20 a month or not, especially because there are other language models out there and other tools that can do many of the things that we want ChatGPT to do, but that's an entirely different video. So if you are using the free version, you will only have access to GPT 3.5 and that's about it. Pretty much all of the improved functionality that you get with GPT with ChatGPT Plus uh, is not available in the free version. You are only given GPT 3.5 and it runs a lot slower as well. If you have ChatGPT Plus, then using GPT 3.5 will be a lot faster. If I ask it to say, give me 20 headlines for an email about my latest fantasy book release, it will 
move very, very quickly in generating all of that output. But generally speaking, I recommend ChatGPT Plus because the quality when using GPT-4 is going to be a lot higher. But ChatGPT Plus also has a number of other improvements, one of which is this advanced data analysis, which used to be called Code Interpreter. This allows you to do much more advanced stuff. And the main benefit that I have in my business is using this button here, which lets you upload files from your computer. And that lets you combine them and use them in unique ways. You can even do some multimodal things. Multimodal means you can interact with the AI in more than just text. So I could upload a video or a spreadsheet or a image and ask it to do various tasks with that. I know one of the most beneficial forms of use is to give it a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of data and it's able to do things like create graphs from that data. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with Code Interpreter that I would recommend you watch a couple of videos on YouTube. I have a video about it just from the author and writer perspective. Uh, but it is a powerful plugin and one of the main reasons to keep ChatGPT Plus because of what it can do. The other thing that you can access with ChatGPT Plus is plugins, which if you have it selected here, you can come here and then select various plugins. I have several that I've selected, um, but you can also go here to the plugin store and find a whole bunch of plugins that you can use. A lot of these are kind of meh, but a lot of them are quite useful. The ones that I find the most useful are the one that I have he listed here. Video captions is one of my favorites. You can give it a YouTube video and it will actually give you a transcript of what that video has. And then WebPilot is similar, except instead of a video, you give it a link to an article and it will be able to read that article and understand it. So those are two of the biggest benefits that you get in addition to having access to GPT-4 in ChatGPT+. Now, if you go down here to the bottom left, you will have a couple of additional options. You can go up to My Plan, which is where you can go if you want to upgrade to ChatGPT+. You can also go here to this box named Custom Instructions. And this is useful because this allows you to put in information that ChatGPT will be able to remember all the time. So you can add information about your business. You can add information about how you want ChatGPT to style its output. And then it will always output in that style as long as you are using these phrases. You can see I have a style prompt that I put in here that I use for creating online content. Uh, which I use quite frequently. And then you can just hit enable for new chats and save, and it will always remember this. The reason this is important is because ChatGPT has a limited memory. If you come here and ask it to do something, for instance, let's say, give me 20 book ideas for a epic fantasy in the style of Brandon Sanderson. It will now give me a bunch of book ideas. And now that it has given us 20 of these, we can ask it to elaborate more on one of them. Let's say we like number five here. We can just say, can you expand on number five? And it will now expand on that particular th thing because it remembers what it has written down. However, this memory is limited. And so if you continue talking with the AI for long enough, it will eventually forget what happened before. Currently in ChatGPT, if you're using GPT-4, it will forget after you've written about 6,000 words, after you or it has written 6,000 words. And so that is why it's important to put information here in the custom instructions area because this is where it's going to be able to remember things forever as long as you leave it in there. The other important thing you can access here is this settings and beta feature, which just allows you to do things like 
customize it to be a dark or light. You can enable the plugins and the advanced data analysis. You can do a couple of other things. And so that's all you really need to know about that. Now, ChatGPT is incredibly useful. And let's talk a little bit about how you can use that. On this channel, The Nerdy Novelist, uh, this channel is all about learning how to write and excel at writing using ChatGPT. I especially cater to fiction writers, but a lot of people who watch my videos are writers of all types, and a lot of the principles I talk about are accessible throughout any kind of writing. Some of the things that ChatGPT can do for you are it can help you when you get stuck, so this happens a lot in many different industries, and I actually was not aware of how much it happened to me until I started using AI, and then I continuously found myself coming back to ChatGPT to ask it for ideas or to brainstorm different things to help me get unstuck from what I was stuck in. And this can happen in any kind of writing, and, and not even writing. It can happen in other areas of your life where you just don't know what you should, you should do next and so you give the ai your context you tell it what you need to do and then it can give you ideas the second thing that i like to use ai for is what i just call the grunt work there are a lot of things in the writing process that are it's just monotonous it's just not really that important for instance i write a lot of different articles for my websites and i often have to retread material that i have covered previously and so it, rather than just have to write it over and over and over again, I might ask AI to do a version using some of the material I've already written. It'll rewrite it, maybe rewrite it in the context of the article I'm currently writing, and it does a really good job of that sort of thing. Additionally, I use it for writing my first draft of fiction because if you prompt it correctly, it can often get you, I'd say about 50% of the way there, and then it's much easier for me to edit it and get it the, the rest of the 50% uh, and perhaps, you know, even more than 100% over so that it ends up being something better than I could have written myself. And it required a lot of a lot less headache because the AI managed to get me halfway there. Another thing you can do if you are a coder. Speaking of grunt work, AI can do a lot of the grunt work for you when it comes to using code. Uh, ChatGPT is not particularly advanced in coding from what I understand. And again, I am not a coder. I am not a technical person, uh, but I've talked to people. My dad is a person who's used it before. And he says that it doesn't, it kind of breaks apart when you get to really advanced stuff. But just like in writing, there's a lot of grunt work that goes into it and you can use it to basically cut back on a lot of the time that it would take to code all of that stuff manually. The next tip that I have for pe people is to just ask it for advice. You can give the AI a role. Let's say you are a best-selling novelist and developmental editor. What advice would you give me for? And then you can just insert whatever situation you are in at the moment. Let's just say a budding author who has never written a book but really wants to write something like a personal memoir and then once you give it that it can then give you advice and here it is it's given me quite a number of Pretty good tips, honestly. Sometimes the output that ChatGPT can give you is a little generic, but sometimes that is a good place to start. Sometimes that is where you need to get started. And so you just take what it gives you and you just continue on. The thing with ChatGPT is a lot of people think that it makes you lazy, that it is doing work for you that you really should be doing yourself. The reality is that most people have things that are difficult for them and that AI can really lift that mental strain for you so you can focus more on the things that you enjoy and that you love to do. And the second thing is AI really isn't that lazy because it is a separate skill. Think of it like photography in a world that has previously just been using fine art. 
photography may seem like cheating to someone who has grown up doing nothing but painting their entire lives. But at the same time, it is a completely new art and you can use it in a new way and it can lead to new skills that you can form. And you will find that the more you work with ChatGPT, the more you will learn how it works, the more you will understand what we call prompt engineering, which is this act of getting the prompt just right so that it gives you the output that you want. The more you work with it, the better you will get and you'll find that it is a new skill, one that can be highly rewarding and very interesting as you go along. I hope this tutorial was useful for you and I will see you in the next video.